Hello everyone, my name is Kylie and today we are joined with, by Vern and Sindel. We are in the Gregory Alcar Museum at Colorado State University in the Shattering Pieces exhibit. This exhibit explores a variety of different kinds of ceramic vessels and pieces made all across the continent of Africa. In this exhibit, there are 141 pieces made in, by 57 different artists from different cultures into 19 different countries. Today, we will see how these artifacts were made similar or different, and we will explore the theme of identity. Each of these was made in a very unique way, and each of these pieces of ceramic has its own identity. Today, for this activity, you will need a pencil and piece of paper, or clay if it was made available to you. For movement qualities today, the things we're going to be exploring while we're dancing, we're going to be exploring time, space, size, levels, and a few different movement efforts called Laban effort movements, specifically carving, curving, and slicing. Alright, so we're going to start with the warm up. This is called the brain dance. We're going to put our hands on our stomach, close our eyes, and we're going to take four deep breaths. Ready? Inhale, and exhale. And inhale. And exhale. One more. I feel like one more now. Alright, and now we're going to massage your brain to wake it up and get it going. And then we're going to pop our arms, take over our arms. And your other arm. Massage it a little. Make sure it's ready to dance. And now you can do one side. Massage your thigh. Get it ready to move. And then do the other side. And then you can do your calves. Very important to be warm so that you don't hurt yourself when you're dancing. All right, and then you're gonna wiggle your toes <laughs> as best you can. And wiggle your other toes. And then you're gonna roll out your feet. Roll it outwards and roll it inwards. And do the same with the other foot. Outwards and inwards. And now shake one arm. And now shake the other arm. And shake the other arm. And just switch as fast as you can. <laughs> and now shake out one leg. And shake out the other. <laughs> and then you can go back to the board and see how fast you can do it. And now shake out your whole body. Alright, now for this next part of the warm-up, we're going to be working with shapes and we're going to think about the ceramics we saw in the museum and what shapes they have and we're going to try to make shapes like that. So, I want you to try to make round shapes. Are you small in shape or big in round? Just play with how you can move your body to be around. Um, <laughs> Hi everyone, now that we've done our warm up, what we're going to do is go back through some movement elements. <laughs> where by going through the movement elements, we're going to be warming up our body even further, getting ready to move to our fullest, and we're going to move in ways that copy the idea of making ceramics. So in all the beautiful ceramic pieces that we're seeing in this exhibit, how does it get made? We can carve the ceramics, we can shape the ceramics, we can twist it, all of the clay, and we can slice into it, make those cuts to make all these beautiful shapes. So those are the four things that we're going to focus on now. We're going to focus on carving, twisting, shaping, and slicing. 
starting with carving. So if we're moving and we're thinking about carving, how can we carve our arms and our body as if it's carving into the space around us? Start with just your arms. How can your arms carve the space? Do it with me now. Perfect. Now that we've gotten our arms, it's on our legs. How can your legs carve space? Can they carve low to the ground? Can you carve with your arms low? Or maybe we're carving up high. And freeze. Perfect. Now that we've gotten used to carving, let's move on to twisting. How can we twist? Let's start with our spine. How can we twist our spine as if we're twisting clay? Well, Rotating around. That's right, arm. How can we twist our arm as if we're twisting clay into a new shape? Can you twist them together? And your legs. How can we twist your legs? Your legs are a little more tricky. You need to be adding some turns. Now twist your whole body, every single part you can think of. How can you twist your shoulder, or maybe your knee? Still thinking about twisting really, really, really high, and really, really, really low. Good job. Now that we've done carving and twisting, Let's move on to shaping. How can we shape our bodies like you're shaping a okay. I can make a round shape, like you did with Sundell in the warm up. Maybe I make really angular shapes with my arms and legs. How can you shape your body like we're shaping clay? Maybe we do a big round shape really low. A really angular shape as high up as we can think. Perfect. Come back to standing. Good job, everybody. Now that we've done those three, our carves, our twists, and our shapes, we're going to move on to the very last movement element that we're going to be thinking about during this lesson, and that's slice. So when you think about slicing through, it has a lot of really sharp high energy, right? So we're going to think of that really high energy, really sharp movement. We're going to slice with our whole body in as many different ways as we can. Thinking about slicing through clay. If my arm is swinging through, slicing through clay, it has to go fast, right? How can I slice with my elbow? I'm going to pull it through. Everybody try that. Try to slice with your elbow. Good job. How can I slice with my knee? Now it's harder, isn't it? Exactly. Now slice with your legs. Legs and arms. Full body. Good job, everybody. Those are our four movement elements. I want you guys to think about these throughout the whole rest of the class. Our car, slice, twist, and shapes. Remember this as we go on to the next part of this lesson. In this next part of our exercise today, what we're going to be doing is looking at three different photos of three different uh, pieces of ceramics from the exhibit. One piece is small and round, and kind of spiky looking. The second is more of a medium size and it's bubbled and has two distinct circles on it. The third is very, very big and it has a very small base and it's really big at the top. What we're going to be doing is we're going to look at these three different pieces of ceramics and we're going to try to move like them. We're going to try to make our movement look like these different pieces of ceramics. So how do we do that? 
if we're doing the small one, we have to be really, really small with our movement. How can we be spiky? Maybe we add some of our slices and some of our twists in our movement. So let's start with that. If we're doing the small piece of pottery, we want to be really, really small with our movement. Maybe even we just move our hands as small as you can and figure out what makes sense in your body to add all the details on that piece of ceramics, all the little spikes. What does that look like on your own body? The second one, the more medium sized one with the two circles. How can we move looking like that? Maybe we do our levels and we do a big circle and we do another one. How does that piece of pottery look on your own body? You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Make your own shapes. Good. And for the third one, the really, really big one, how can we move our bodies? Thinking of our movement elements that we've been thinking about to mimic that piece of ceramics. Maybe I start really, really small and low and I get really, really big. Maybe I get really, 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 really big and wide and I get smaller. It's your choice, however you want to move. What you're going to be doing is you're going to pick one of the three pieces of ceramics that we're looking at, and you're going to really look at it, you're going to take some time to look at it and move how you think your body should move like that piece of ceramics. So go ahead and take a moment to do that now. Alright, now that you've explored some other people's works of pottery, it's time for you to make your own. If your teacher has clay for you that we provided, feel free to pass that out now. What you're going to be doing is making your very own piece of pottery. So take your clay and mold it into whatever you want to. You can have handles, you can not have handles, you can make it big or small. You can have a wide base or a small base, whatever you want to. It's your piece of pottery. And if you don't have clay, feel free to grab some paper and a pencil 
and draw your own piece of pottery so that you can still participate in the next part of this activity. I can't wait to see all the great pottery that you come up with. Okay everyone, now that you've had the chance to make your own pieces of pottery, what we're going to do is we're going to create our very own two movements that mimic our pieces of pottery that we just made. So, for example, what if I'm making the piece of pottery that I just made, I'm going to think of two of the movement elements that we talked about earlier that I want to do that looks like that piece of pottery. So, for example, I could use the movement element shape that we talked about, and I could use the movement element card that we talked about. Maybe I can make a really low shape to start my movement, and then card, and then make another round shape at the top. Those are my movements for my little race. And I want you guys to all do the same thing. So you guys take a look at your own pieces of pottery that you just made, and choose two movement elements out of the four that we talked about. So you can choose carving, you can choose shaping, you can use twisting, or you can use slicing. So pick two of those four, carving, shaping, twisting, and slicing. And only two, and create some movement of your own that mimics your pottery in any way that you want. So maybe instead of doing carving, and shaping this time, I do slicing and twisting. Maybe I twist really round, so like the middle part of my pottery, and then I slice up really tall and thin. So go ahead and take some time to figure out what you're going to be doing for your movement. Now that you've just made your very own two movements based on the shape of your pottery, we're going to go inside of the pot. What are you going to put in your pot? You can put your own personality into the pot. So for instance, if I'm fun and bubbly, I can do some moves that are really big and jumping and really out there. Or if I want to put, maybe I don't want to put my personality in the pot, maybe I want to put some flowers in the pot. So we can do some movement that's very growing and reaching for a flower that's growing out of the pot. Or, if I just want to put my own identity in the pot, I'm a dance major, so I could put some dance moves into the pot. And now, 
you get to choose two movements that you're going to put into your own plot. So we just had our two movements making the shape of the plot, and now, right after the last movement of the shape, you get to put what you're putting in the plot. So I'm going to put that I'm a dance major in the plot, so I'm going to do about one move, and then I'm going to do that I do video for my second thing. So I'm going to put me taking a picture of something as my second move. And now you get to have some time to make up your very own two movements based on your own identity and what you're going to put into the pot. Now that we've all had a chance to come up with our four movements total, the two that mimic what the pottery looks like, what the shape of it is, and the two based on what we're going to be putting into our pottery, you're going to take all four of those movements and create your own dance sequence to a piece of music. And what we're going to do is we're going to have whoever is teaching this class to you divide all of you into three groups. The first group is going to be dancing with Sindel. The second group is going to be dancing with Fern, and the third group is going to be dancing with me, Kylie. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about those phrases that we just came up with, practice them a couple times, and then we're going to break up into our groups and perform for our classmates. Alright, group one, are you ready? Five, six, seven, eight. Drop our hands down our center and do 
that three more times. Take a deep breath. And drop your arms. Two more. Deep breath. And join the arms. Last one. And now we're going to take our arms all the way down to the ground. If you can't touch the ground, you can touch your feet, your ankles, your knees, wherever is comfortable. We're going to hold that for a second. Bend your legs. And stretch them up. Then roll all the way back up. We're going to shake out our whole body one last time. Get all that movement out that we just did. Up, give a big bow. You guys did awesome. Thank you guys so much for being with us.